So you have a big physical media collection and you want to rip it to a local server. So as much as I give kudos to Kaleidoscape, I talk about streaming and using my Apple TVs, and I have a very large iTunes library and all that sort of thing. There's still plenty of reasons why physical media might, might fit into your content source set for your home theater and your entertainment space and so on. As great as Kaleidoscape is, the store isn't infinite. Not everything is there. There's some key things missing. And even streaming uh, doesn't have everything. Although, although the iTunes store is, is pretty darn complete when you go looking for stuff, there's still things that aren't there as well. And given the long history of it and such, there's been quite a lot of content that's come out on physical media that maybe hasn't found its way to being upgraded, had, hasn't found its way to being released in digital and so on. And I can also see the perspective of the folks that like to collect because they like to collect the physical thing. I have thought about that a little bit myself with regards to adding some vinyl to my hi-fi music listening audio setup. I certainly don't need it because I want to access, or because I need it to access the content. I can just pull pretty much any, any song, album, or whatever that I would want to play up on, on Apple Music. But there's just something tactile, nice, and so on, deliberate, right, that goes with having that physical thing, having it on your shelf, having it around you, having it in the environment, and going a little bit further, I guess you could say, than, than just the digital realm. Case in point, this is the Shawa era Godzilla collection that came out on physical media. Can you get that on Kaleidoscape? No, they don't have it. They don't have Criterion. Can you buy these movies on Apple iTunes? Mostly. They did actually release the master versions of these to Apple TV, but I don't believe they all have the special features. And some of the movies in this set, like the Godzilla vs. King Kong specifically, I believe, aren't, aren't available on iTunes. There's 15 movies in this set. Not all 15 of those films are still on iTunes. And this collection is just stellar. It's, this, is a, this is a coffee table book, right, that also happens to hold the discs. But I don't want to flip those discs. I don't want to put those discs in a player. If I'm going to have that content available to me, I'm used to a Kaleidoscape experience. I'm used to an iTunes experience. Any amount of physical media that I would like to do, I would like to have it ready to play, ready to pull up, ripped in and available in this type of quality. And that's the other actually reason that I've been considering or I'm in the process of maybe adding a little bit of physical media back into my content set. Since I redid the theater space and I'm kind of upgrading spaces around the house, my default methodology has been to, to watch on Kaleidoscape first as priority, assuming it was available. And if it wasn't available, just accept the iTunes copy, just accept the streaming copy. But I kind of don't want to do that anymore. I put a lot more money into my home theater, upgraded a lot, and even in the living room here, I have some plans to, to step this system up too. If I can avoid it, yeah, it's, it's nice, it's simple, it's easy, and whatnot, but I kind of want those lossless audio tracks, and I want the higher video bit rates and that sort of thing. I'm back into, the, back into exploring some level of this DIY space. I'm going to do this in multiple parts. In this video, I want to focus just on the idea that I have a disc, it has a movie on it. How do I get that movie off of that disc in a way that I could put it somewhere on my, on my local network in my home and make it accessible to play? There's a number of different ways to do that, but it basically all starts with needing to have a computer of some sort to be able to get those bits off. And you need a drive to be able to put that disc into the drive on your computer, break that copy protection and read those bits. And so right here in step one, phase one, is where things already start to go off the rails a little bit for how complex and hassle-ridden this whole kind of process is. Can you go to Best Buy? Can you buy a drive off the shelf, bring it home, plug it into a computer, and rip a disc with the right software? Not really. Can you go to Amazon.com and just freely buy a drive without much care or attention, paying much attention to what you're actually buying? get it delivered to you from Prime in a day or two days, plug it in and rip some discs. Not really. So the reality is the drive makers, the content owners, and all of those folks have been wise to people doing this for a long time. And so newer drives have newer versions of firmware that don't allow the same type of disc, disc access and such for reading and encryption breaking and all that sort of thing. So if you want to take content off of a commercial Blu-ray 
4K Blu-ray and HD Blu-ray, you need to have the right kind of drive, you need to have the right firmware loaded on it in conjunction with using the software that you're actually going to use to read the bits. I just acquired this recently. Again, did I buy this off Amazon? Did I just drive up to Best Buy and grab it? No. I hopped on forums for popular ripping software and found basically that there's some enterprising individuals out there selling firmware rolled back drives of the right type and the right kinds for reliably being able to, to work with the software that people use today to rip their discs. This was 170 bucks shipped. Of course, the person providing the service, doing the firmware loading and all of that sort of thing, is taking a little bit of profit. I think the drive itself and or the enclosure might have been about 50 bucks less than that, so they're not really gouging it too bad. They're taking, I think, a reasonable amount of money to perform a service which is flashing this drive. If you want to flash this drive yourself, well, get your drive, get on the forums, or develop some Windows and Linux command line experience if you don't have it, and go through the process of trying to find, download, execute the firmware upgrade, and load that firmware yourself. But suffice it to say, again, you're not just grabbing any old drive from any old store, putting disks in them, and ripping them. Not anymore. You also need to pay a little bit of attention to the fact that some drives are specifically 4K. Some drives are not, but they're UHD friendly because they can read the BDXL format, and on and on and on. Right away, again, step one, before you even get started with the idea of wanting to get something off of a disk, know that you're going to have to put in a little bit of effort, you're going to have to put in a little bit of research time to make sure that you're getting the right hardware to be able to get those bits off your disks. So in this case, this is an external, but again, with the right software, it will decrypt and allow for ripping of the bits from a 4K Blu-ray disk. So step one, get your drive. Step two, you kind of need to figure out what exact, how exactly do you want to rip. A Blu-ray disc, a commercially mastered Blu-ray disc, of course, has a whole bunch of content on that disc, a whole bunch of stuff. It has warnings and trailers, and it has the movie in a bunch of different languages. It has all the subtitles that go with that movie. It might have special features. It has the menu system, the menu structure, artwork, and so on that goes with that. And you kind of, you really up front need to decide for yourself, what do you want when you play that movie? Do you want the experience of the entirety of the disc as it was with the menus and having to go through the trailers and all the forced things to get in and out of a in and out of a piece of content or do you want to try to just get the movie component tree and the bits and pieces of the movie out the main video stream the audio streams that you care about and of course the relevant subtitles there's a couple of different ways to accomplish all of that a full disc can be ripped into what's called an ISO that means you get one file for the entirety of the disc but you, of course, downstream, you're going to need to make sure that you have the right software to rip an ISO, and you're going to have to have the right playback device and, and, and so on to be able to play that ISO. If you don't rip the full disk to an ISO, you have a choice to rip it to a folder structure, what we call like a BDMV folder structure. It's the same stuff, just instead of being kind of like compressed and structured into a single file, you're basically taking a, dec a decrypted copy of all of the files as they are structured into the file system of the disk itself. Two ways to get the entirety of the disk, all of the original content to be able to play with the menus, access all those special features and so on, and be able to rip in a fairly simpler manner. Now if you want just the movie, prepare to do some work. And there's a lot of pitfalls with deciding that you just want to get the movie off the disk in some cases, or in many cases I would actually say. First, you got to further decide, well, what file do, format do I want to put that movie in? I would recommend that you jettison any other type of file format out of your mind if you are going to do just a main video, main movie rip, and just focus on MKV. Yeah, you can do M2TS, and you can do MP4s, and, and, and but MKV will hold pretty much everything that could come off of a disc. You're going to get chapters. You're going to get other benefits. Dolby Vision included now, choosing to use MKV as your format. And one thing that I'll say is anybody that's ripping and basically re-encoding or encoding the lossless format down or compressing the video stream that they get off of a disc to make it smaller, I don't know why you would possibly even consider doing that. If you're going to, if you're going to lose the quality of what you would take off of that disc and serve it to yourself in a player, 
just go to iTunes and buy it. Just go to Voodoo and buy it. You're making a substandard copy of the thing. You might as well just go all digital. If you're gonna if you're gonna degrade the quality, it is not it is not worth your time anymore. Streaming is so good. It's only getting better. You're absolutely just wasting your time. So if you're not gonna keep the one to one, the one to one stuff either in that full disc structure or in that MKV reduction, just stop. Get out. Done. So the reason that I, I like those specific formats, and my preference would be if you're going to go full disk, I prefer an ISO over a folder if possible. I like only having to move one file around between my computer and my NAS and, and whatnot, as well as that MKV being a single file that can, can contain everything. I'm a big fan of keeping things simple, trying to maintain consistency and so on, and messing with folders, all of the files and stuff that goes with it. I would rather just do an ISO. So that's my recommendation is full disk grip ISO. And if I do want to take something and reduce it down, MKV is the MKV is the winner there. If you want to rip, now you need the software to do it. There's a, a variety of different options. If you go just searching, how do I rip a Blu-ray? You're going to find a massive amount of shovelware. My experience is that you can really reduce down to a handful of really good applications for doing this that include different levels of decryption and uh, the actual act of copying the bits off and packaging them up and that sort of thing. There's two main tools that I would recommend that you base your platform on. One of them is called AnyDVD. The other is called MakeMKV. Both of these tools have been around in this space for a very long time. Any DVD almost went away a few years ago. It kind of, it almost got taken down and then it changed some hands and it moved some geolocations and it popped back up and it's been reliably available for some time. Make MKV has been a constant in this space for as long as I can remember. And I've been tinkering with this stuff for uh, about a decade, basically since, since around the time the PlayStation 3 came out. And I first had the inclination to say, oh, I can take some stuff off of my DVDs and then my Blu-rays at the time and actually play them locally from a hard drive to, to my PS3 and, and went down this slippery slope for a good while since then. But in any case, any DVD gives you that direct ability to put a disc into your tray, decrypt, press essentially one button, and rip to your choice of a BDMV folder or an ISO. Very simple, very direct very easy. Make MKV also, we'll go into the specifics of, of MKVs in a little bit, but suffice it to say again, really great piece of software. Both of them are technically um, commercial. Any DVD, any DVD will cost you some money. You can download Make MKV for free and use it under their beta that it's been in beta for God knows how long at this time. There is a donation structure for it. It's 50 bucks. If you're going to use the tool and you're going to use it a lot in, in going down this road and, and into this endeavor. Pay the developers the 50 bucks. Let them make some money. Support the development, the future availability of the tool, and so on. Pay the 50 bucks. Unlock it. Lifetime access. Easy, simple. Started the process of re-ripping, trying to get some content off of discs, using the drive that I bought that I showed a couple minutes ago. And I wanted to speak to a couple things about the process of it. One, I was expecting to be able to use the external drive on my 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro, and my experience with that was essentially no dice whatsoever. I don't know if the USB ports on the device weren't providing the right amount of power. I tried a data connection to the laptop and a power connection, both to another port on the laptop, to a port on the power strip that I have behind my monitor, and I encountered nothing but headaches and hassles and read errors in just about every program that I tried. Given that's a Mac, I did use M I was trying to use Make MKV, do some full disk folder backups, which you can do, BDMV folder backups, which you can do in Make MKV. And I was trying the DVD FOB software as well to do a full disk rip into an ISO. And just flat out no go. DVD FOB would encounter read errors and go unstable unreliable and not only that but even to get the drive working and dvd fob running on my mac i had to go to some real like bios ish level security access remove some security restrictions which i wasn't really crazy about now since using that software i've got really weird background images on my computer it's not doing the wallpapers 
like it was before. I think as a part and parcel of some of the changes that I made to my Mac and loading and then unloading that software, I requested a refund. I didn't find that it was working very well at all. I'm probably going to end up completely reinstalling Mac OS and setting my laptop up from scratch. P-I-T-A. Like I mentioned, I want to do ISO rips. I like the single file. I like the packaging of an ISO rather than folders. So with the, the unreliability of using the external drive on the Mac and the fact that there's really no good ISO software then that I could find because again DVD fab was failing for me. I moved the operation over to my wife's computer um, in our office. She's been using and is still using a, a couple generation old Intel NUC, um, i5 Intel NUC, 16 gig of RAM and so on. And I connected both of the USB ports of the drive to the NUC and I've actually been ripping reliably there. I haven't seen the power related issues, MKV specifically on the Mac was throwing a lot of errors suggesting power, uh, sustained power problems and so on. I haven't seen any of that. Uh, my, my quick experience here, if you're going to set up a, a ripping operation, stick to Windows. Mac OS, it doesn't have the same software, it doesn't have the same tools, and it, it just didn't work very reliably for me. Maybe also consider whether you're driving your drive off of a laptop versus uh, some more form of a desktop computer. That, that may also introduce some reliability concerns as well. I also found too, you know, you rip a disc, a Blu-ray, you're talking 45, maybe 50 gig or more. A UHD Blu-ray can go from 60, 70, 80 up to close to 100 gigabytes. You need space to store that. And so I actually downgraded my MacBook to a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And with everything else loaded on there, the OS and so on, that's not a lot of room to temporarily store ripped stuff as I take it off a disc and I move it to my server. So another thing you got to got to consider is what computer are you doing this on? Is there enough space to, to, to load and process and copy and, and move all the different files and large files and, and volume of them that you may be shuffling around as you're doing this? So the MacBook was kind of a failure. So I have had better luck with the Intel NUC. Again, Windows now brings back into the picture the ability to use any DVD. There's not a Mac version. There is a Windows version, and I've been using any DVD and MK, M, make MKV kind of in concert with each other. Those two tools used to be at odds and actually would throw errors and give you warnings if you were running both of them at the same time. Now, because of how the schemas to break the copy protection and such work, they, they are, they're more integrated, and I found that actually running the two of them together is kind of the, the sweet spot because any DVD doesn't seem to be breaking 4K disk encryption to be able to create the ISOs. It'll do the Blu-ray one fine itself, but MakeMKV can do the, the 4K better, and it does it through this concept called Lib LibreDrive, L-I-B-R-E. Once MKV takes care of it, any DVD is, is able to get it, and then one click and make the ISO, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But one other thing that I wanted to call attention to as you start this process is just the, the prolific quantity of disk read errors that you're going to expect as you do this. Don't expect to simply just take a disk depending on how it was handled, where it came from or whatever, put it in a drive, click that button and walk away and come back in an hour or so because it takes a good hour to, to rip a disk and you're going to always have your file. Um, I'd say anecdotally throwing out a number, I probably see 25% of my click and go attempts to result in some kind of a read error. So the one thing that you absolutely need to do and plan for is clean your disk. Even if your disk looks clean, it might not be. And so I've got some cloths in there, do a little and wipe them off, other types of cleaners and, and so on. You want to make sure that that disk is clean and debris is as, as clean and debris free as possible. You know, blow it off lightly, get any fibers or, or lint and such off of there. And if you're looking at a disc with some really deep mars or markings and scratches, you might just be totally out of luck. That that disc might just completely fail to rip. And, and it's a pain because sometimes when the disc read errors happen, you're going to hear that thing spinning and grinding and it's going to go on for minutes. Sometimes it's able to recover. A lot of times it's not. Most of the time any DVD will throw an error, a, a read error, and you'll be able to abort the process, delete the file, eject it, and everything's still stable to go on to your next disk or potentially re-clean that disk and try again. I've had a number of times already where a disk failed, cleaned it, failed again, cleaned it again a little more deeper, 
or whatnot and magically the third time was the charm or whatnot so if you're getting a read error you can clean you know clean and try again it's always a strategy if you're getting if you're getting several of the same read errors in a row that disc is probably done you're out of luck it's it's just not going to rip again even pristine looking discs might not always work especially when you're talking about 4k discs there's so much data packed onto a 4k disc that the data density is just it's so tight and it doesn't take much for 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 something to get in the way of reading the disc reliably and even a brand new disc out of a freshly sealed packaging should still get wiped off and cleaned and, and do your best to absolutely protect the the bottom of your discs all right so here we are at my wife's computing station spoiler alert i keep my desk a lot cleaner than she does uh, here i've got a 4k disc this is ready player one you can kind of see I've, I've given it a wipe off i've cleaned it up i've got my drive there it's an lg drive and a uh, sold as a buffalo drive there's the nuc the other attachment there is a, a usb hub that her keyboard and, and such is attached to let me tell you she's ecstatic about me using her setup for this <laughs> and and having discs spinning and making noise and all that sort of thing so i've got any dvd loaded up here ready to run and i've got make mkv running so this is how basically I do it. Like I mentioned, you kind of keep both tools running and they'll work together to, to take care of making the, the disc available to get the stuff off. So I'm gonna eject my tray. This is a thin external, not a full size external. So it's not a slot loader, but it is, it is a thin tray. So I've got, this is actually Ready Player One. Um, I'm, I'm interested to check this out off of the disc and kind of compare and contrast to the Kaleidoscape version. So there I've pushed that in. We can hear it starting to spin up, still waiting. As soon as it starts to engage here, we'll see some, some action on screen. There we go. Any DVD is scanning the disc. The disc you have inserted will be available shortly. Please wait. This whole operation might take 20 seconds, 45 seconds. Okay, that was actually pretty quick. So we take a look at what we got here, a summary using the Buffalo optical drive, gives us a size, a volume label, AACS protection level. And then notice we see here, disk supports bus encryption, disk wants bus encryption, bus encryption disabled by make MKV Libra drive, failed to send host key, removed copy protection, etc. And so this is where make MKV and any DVD work together. And via this Libra drive connection, I don't know the particulars on how it's working in the background, but this is the key to 4K disk access. So now it's ready. I have any DVD configured to pop up this status window. As I mentioned, any DVD gives you the ability to rip both to an ISO or a folder. That's, that's what any DVD does. In this case, I'm choosing to rip to an ISO. I'm gonna rip to the local drive first, and then I will copy it to my NAS later. I do not recommend that you rip directly to your NAS because then you're adding the network link, the data link of the network between the bits coming off the drive and the bits being written locally. You're much more stable, I found, if you rip to the local drive and then copy later. And so we'll get into the particulars of make MKV later, but I just wanna show here, essentially we would click copy disk, the process would start. It takes about an hour, maybe a little bit more for a larger 4K disk. And best case scenario, you come back, your ISO is sitting there. Not always, but that's the best case. All right, one more example of this. This is Studio Ghibli movie, Spirited Away. Go ahead and close that. This is a regular Blu-ray, and we're gonna see kind of similar, similar steps here. Any DVD is scanning the disc. A lot of times a regular Blu-ray will go a little faster than a 4K. And actually, I should probably point out the reason that Ready Player One uh, kind of decrypted and was made available so fast is because I had already actually put it in and I think some of the keys and the details are cached in these programs so the next time you put the same disc in it's a it's a bit faster so here we go video blu-ray spirited away AACS protected version 63 removed protection notice there's no mention of the Libra drive it still is shows up here in make MKV but it's not necessary for these two programs to work in concert when you're talking about just a regular Blu-ray. So I'm gonna dismiss this, come up here and copy disc. You can hear it spinning up, drive light is blinking. 
it'll take a minute to kind of stabilize and, and there we are uh, reading about 10 megabytes per second. Time remaining 117, these aren't always accurate. It might take longer. If, if it trips up on something and it needs to spin for a while, obviously it's gonna take longer. If it's really able to fly, it could take less. Most progress meters and timers in software actions and whatnot today are, are really approximations. So plan a good hour for any given disk. So when this finishes, I'll have an ISO file, one single file for this disk sitting on the hard drive of the computer. And then I would go forward to copy that to my NAS and process metadata. So this one's getting a little long already. I think I'm gonna stop it here and I'm gonna follow up with the next video being totally focused on operation of Make MKV and looking at a variety of different types of disks with different types of mastering movies and TV shows and talking about a lot of the pitfalls that you encounter if you really wanna go down the road of, of making MKVs versus potentially just going the ISO route and so on. So I guess the ripping, the getting the bits off of, of the disk piece of this series is going to be two videos and then from there we'll move into how do you store it setting up setting up your actual server and operating an actual server to serve your media and then onward into playback so on so if you have questions please leave them in the comments let me know what you think please like and subscribe and as always thanks for watching